In this video, I want to talk about machine learning pipelines. And in particular, I would like to talk about the pipeline that Raza has. And currently in Raza version 2, here's how it works. When a user passes a message, it first goes into a NLU pipeline. These would contain all the components that only look at what's happening in the current message in order to make a prediction. The main output of this pipeline is intents and entities, and typically these would be used by algorithms later on to determine the next best action. That part of the machine learning pipeline has typically been referred to as core, and that part of the pipeline contains all of our policies that will determine the next best action based on the current intent and entity and slot values, as well as the conversation so far. Let's zoom in on this NLU pipeline first though, because if you look at the way that the pipeline is constructed, it's pretty linear. We start with the message, which is then passed to a tokenizer. That message will now contain text as well as separate tokens. After that, it's typically passed through some featureizers. So let's say that we have two count vector featureizers in sequence. This will make our message bigger because we'll get some numeric features and some more after the second count factorizer. Eventually, it is passed to this diet classifier, which will add an intent and maybe some entities as well. But after that, we can attach a second entity extractor, meaning that we are able to add more than one entity extractor into our pipeline. What's really characteristic about this pipeline in particular is that it's linear or serial. It starts somewhere and it goes through all the separate components and at the end, we have all of our predictions. Now, this way of thinking about the pipeline is nice because it's relatively simple, but it is not the way forward if you think about all the different features that we might be interested in. You see, if we have a look at our core models over here, then we have this one machine learning model, also known as the TAT policy. And this machine learning model wants to make the next action prediction. And as of Raza 2.2, we've said, well, we don't just want you to be able to make that prediction based on intent values, because the user might be sending a message that doesn't fit an intent. So as a design choice, it is now possible to send these features that are generated in the NLU pipeline to our policy mechanisms as well. And again, this is a feature that we really like to have because it allows us to make predictions even when one of these single messages doesn't necessarily fit an intent. However, when you look at it this way, this linear aspect of a pipeline no longer really holds. And you could wonder if it really makes sense to think about our machine learning backend as a pipeline. Because a pipeline suggests step one, then two, etc. But maybe it'd be better if we had a different data structure in the back of our minds. So let's see if we can redraw this just to make it easier to think about. So what I've now done is I've removed the notion of a NLU pipeline and a policy pipeline. And instead, I've just drawn it as a giant graph with nodes and edges. A node in this case can still be a component. So this node over here would still be the tokenizer. But the edges that you now see show a dependency that's required during training. For example, the count vector featureizers really need a tokenizer around in order to generate features for each token. Similarly, the diet classifier needs numeric features in order to train. So therefore, it requires these count vectors to be around first. It deserves to emphasize that what I'm drawing here is the training part. If we have a look at the TET policy, then if this were happening in production, then it would also receive intents and entities. But during training, it would only receive the conversation so far found in our stories files and these two count vector featureizers. However, here is the neat idea. Once we allow ourselves to look at this as a machine learning backend, and note I'm using the word backend here as opposed to a pipeline, then we can start to consider maybe some things that we can do to make our life just a little bit better. One of the benefits of having a system look like this is that we might be able to do more things in parallel. As an example, let's say that we have this tokenizer at the ready. Then this 
featureizer, this featureizer, as well as this regex entity extractor can already kick off. They don't have to wait for each other as far as training is concerned. And that means that we might be able to parallelize this, which could offer us a pretty significant speed increase. That certainly is a nice to have. Another big benefit of this, which is definitely going to help our research team, is that we can more easily hook things together. If we were ever to come up with a new policy system and we said, well, that uses the entity extractors we've used so far, then nothing is really stopping us from just adding another node into the system. The whole notion of an NLU pipeline and a policy pipeline is kind of mixed into one because we now have a computational graph as our machine learning backend. And this brings in lots of interesting research ideas as well. And this is also what I think is one of the bigger benefits. Because we are no longer worried about whether or not it's an NLU pipeline or a policy pipeline, we can really start thinking more in terms of, hey, what other kinds of components do we want to add here? And that really removes a lot of the mental burden when it comes to implementing new components. There is, however, one more big benefit here. If we consider that these systems need to train, we can also consider what might happen if we have to train a system a second time. Let's suppose that we are currently looking at a graph backend that has already been trained. And what we're about to do is we're about to make a small change to the hyperparameters of this one component. That would mean that this component definitely needs to be retrained. However, I hope it's clear that this should have no effect on this component, this component, or this one. It would affect all of its children, so that means the diet classifier would have to retrain, as well as the TET policy. And because of that, the policy ensemble might need to be retrained. But we don't need to worry about the memoization policy or the rule policy. Besides the fact that we might be able to gain some performance because we might be able to run some of these nodes in parallel, another really big performance boost can be made by introducing a cache for all of these separate components, which will allow us to prevent retraining unless we really need to. If the data doesn't change and we only change a hyperparameter, then we only have to concern ourselves with a subset of the original graph. And that's a huge benefit, especially if you retrain your system often with different hyperparameters. To give a small demo of this effect, I figured I would just show you. What I've got here is a Raza init project that's running the first release candidate of Raza 3.0. And what I also have here is just a standard configuration for Raza models. I've got my policy mechanisms, and I also have my die classifier with my featureizers. I could now tell Raza to train, and this will take a moment. The model is now done training, and we can inspect the logs. Now, one thing that's interesting to see is that the TET policy is done training before the diet classifier, which is different than the situation in Raza 2.x. Another thing that's really different is that we now have this new folder, the .raza folder. And if we look into it, we seem to have a cache database and lots of other folders. And if we open a few of these up, you should be able to recognize that these belong to different components. I seem to have something with out of vocabulary words over here, which suggests a count factorizer. I can see stuff from my TET policy over here. There's another featureizer over here. All of these folders contain information that allows us to fingerprint our components, so to say. And that means that if I were now to retrain my Raza model, it ought to be done a lot quicker. It was able to restore all of these separate components from cache. So let's now make a small change to this pipeline. Let's say I remove the response selector over here. If I were now to retrain, again, everything can be restored from the cache. We're just removing a component from the graph, so to say.
If I were now to change the setting from the diet classifier, however, it would be somewhat different, because now the diet classifier did change, which means that that component needs to retrain, as well as any component that really depends on it. It's done training now, so let's have a quick look at the logs. It was able to fetch a lot of components from the cache once more, but the diet classifier changed, so that had to be retrained. But it's the only component that needs to be retrained because the diet classifier doesn't have any components that depend on it. The entity synonym mapper doesn't depend on the diet output, and the fallback classifier doesn't have to retrain as it doesn't need training and is only added during the prediction. If I were now to change this count vector featureizer, as a final example, then I would expect this component to retrain as well as the diet classifier because the diet classifier directly depends on this component in order to work. Again, from the logs, we can see that a lot of stuff just gets retrieved from the cache, but this count vector featureizer does need to be retrained. And once it's done training, we continue by training the diet classifier. Now what you might notice is that every time when we do this, a new folder appears here in our cache. And that's great because it means that components get fingerprinted and we can reuse them for later use, which will save us a lot of compute time in the long run. I'm hoping that you're very excited about this feature. And if you want to go ahead and try it out, I'm happy to report that Raza 3.0 is live right now. So feel free to try it out and let us know if you have any feedback.